You've all heard of conductors. Uh, it's a good, this, this kind of metal is a good conductor or a bad conductor. Well, I imagine you have. We've also got uh, musical conductors, and there's some good, some bad. Um, and so we're going to talk about conductors and insulators. And just one concept in this particular section of the textbook to define conduction, conductor, and insulator. So not only can electric charge exist on an object, but it, it can also move through an object and from one object to another, as shown uh, in the previous section. If it, with an analogy with uh, thermodynamics, if you have a hotter object, you have heat that flows to the colder object. The electrical analogy to that is if you have a negatively charged object, a bunch of electrons in there, then electrons in this intermediate object are going to be repelled by that negatively charged object and attracted to the positively charged object. So that's electrical conduction. That's what it is. And how well those electrons move is, um, is, is the subject of, of the definitions of conductors and insulators. Now, it's not only electrons that can move to create electrical currents. And we'll talk more about this in later chapters. Uh, but in metals, which is the principal subject of interest for this particular chapter and most of the rest of the semester, in metals, the, the nuclei stay put, but the electrons are free to roam through the, through the material. So they're the ones that carry the current. So mostly we'll talk about electrons carrying the current. Um, so to define electrical conduction, conduction is just movement of electrical charge, normally electrons, through a material. Gases, liquids, and uh, solids can all conduct electricity. Um, materials that readily conduct electric charge are called electrical conductors. And materials that conduct electric charge poorly are called electrical insulators. And we'll talk more about conductivity later in the later chapters, but for today, a conductor is one that conducts charge, the charge moves through reasonably freely, an insulator is one that it doesn't move through so freely. That's all there is to it. Um, in this next video, we're going to show some uh, demonstrations of charging of, of foam peanuts and a mop and different things. And also at the end, we'll talk about uh, an incident that happened on White Rock Mountain. It's this, this is called Square Top. It's a beautiful, beautiful picturesque peak in the uh, Wind River Range, the Green River Lakes area. This is, uh, I believe, the, the upper Green River Lake shown here. I've climbed that one. I also climbed uh, this White Rock Mountain. This is the one that, that's the subject of interest today. This little cone-shaped thing here, my brother and I, when we were teenagers, got to the top of that in, um, in a snowstorm. This is a demonstration of electric charge. I'm going to be using this Van de Graaff generator hand cranked for your viewing pleasure. I will be, uh, first we'll turn out the lights. I'll turn this, well, basically how you generate charge is turning this wheel. This uh, um, band spins and rubs off charge and then you can get sparks here. So let me demonstrate first with the lights out that we're really getting electricity here and then we'll have some more fun. Okay, I'm turning the crank and bringing the sphere in near contact with the other sphere. Um, then we're going to try putting some uh, paper plates with foam peanuts on top here. And what we hope to be able to see is that the electric charge will charge these peanuts, then all being charged with the same charge, they'll repel each other. So like charges repel. 
and they'll they'll head out for the for Timbuktu. Coming toward me, I'm a real magnet for peanuts. And then we have uh, the uh, which which gives us the idea now that we can stack some paper plates on here and see if we can get enough charge for these paper plate or uh, um, tin plates to repel each other enough to 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 move off. So these. Uh, uh, pie tins are actually repelling each other in the same way that the foam peanuts did and once the once two plates acquire the same type of charge either positive or negative they repel each other and come apart and finally let's uh, see what this does to your hair we could have somebody up, come up here and put their hand on here and watch their hair come on in um, or we can just use this cute little mop um, It's a nice hairstyle. So that's a Van de Graaff generator. Um, the same thing happens to your shirt when you bring it out of uh, the dryer on a hot day, on a, on a um, dry day. When the humidity is low, you get the best effects with, um, with static electric charge. Same thing happens if you rub a, a balloon in your hair, there's charge transfer, and your hair can then start uh, standing on end. The, uh, same thing happened to my brother on the top of uh, White Rock Mountain, where um, 15 seconds after he stood on the top of the mountain, um, lightning struck. So just before he, uh, I was right behind him on the mountain. It's 11,500 foot mountain, 10,500 feet, I think, in the Wind River Range. And um, he got to the top before I did. There, there's a little kind of peak at the top. and. Um, touched the top and I looked up there and I said we were both teenagers and it was the 70s and hair grew a little longer in those days and and I said uh, David your your hair is standing on end and he didn't realize that and he uh, so we beat it off the top of the mountain I didn't get to the top because I didn't want to get electrocuted and uh, about 15 seconds later about uh, 15 feet away the, the lightning struck and um, it was very loud and there was no delay between the lightning and the thunder. Thank you. So in this demo, you might not have been able to see the spark when I turned the lights out. Um, and the reason is there's a certain frame rate of the camera and the, um, if the frame rate doesn't happen to coincide with exactly the second when that spark comes across, then you're not going to see it because it happens so instantaneously. But later on in the video, you might have been able to see a spark that when I brought the small sphere up next to the big sphere, there was a spark that did arc across and was visible. Um, all of us have used copiers. Now, how do they work? Well, static, uh, uh, electric, well, electric charge, um, like charges repel and unlike charges attract are critical to the operation of these devices. And at the heart of them is the drum. This um, xerographic drum is an aluminum drum coated with selenium. And uh, what you can see here is a, the piece of paper that you're making the copy of. There's some imaging, some mirrors, and some lenses and things that send that image onto this drum. And the way that it works is, uh, first of all, the selenium is a photoconductor meaning that when it's in the dark, it's an insulator. <laughs> and when it's exposed to light, it becomes a conductor. So that offers an opportunity for selectively charging the drum and attracting the toner. And the way that it works first is uh, there's something called a corotron that, that charges up, puts a positive charge on the entire uh, surface of the drum, selenium coated drum. And um, then, and that's in the dark, so it's, it's uh, ex not exposed to light during that time. 
then the image is projected onto the drum like we talked about before using the mirrors and the um, and lenses. So you expose this, this image onto the drum. Well, where the light hits, so the spaces where there isn't a three, like a space like that, the light's going to hit that spot. The selenium is going to become a conductor. And then that charge that you put on the selenium gets conducted through the aluminum, and the selenium is left as uh, electrically neutral. And so, but everywhere that there's a dark place, so this point here on the three, uh, where, th where there's that spot, um, there's no light that shines there in the image projected from the, uh, the thing you're taking the picture of. And, and so the charge remains there. So you have basically a three etched on that selenium surface. You, couldn't, you wouldn't be able to see it yet. It's just an etching in charge. And um, so the dark areas of the image retain their charge. And step three is that you spread toner on here. It's negatively charged. So this negatively charged toner is, is sprayed out onto the drum, attracts the positive charge, and then now you have a drum that you could see the actual toner on. And, and the next step then is to um, put the paper up on it and try and get the, pa the toner to go from the drum to the paper. Problem, if the paper is electrically neutral, it's not going to be able to attract that toner because the toner being negatively charged is attracted to the positively charged drum. So what you do is you use another Corotron to charge the paper and you give it more charge than what the drum has. And so you've got a positively charged paper, a positively charged drum, you've got a negatively charged toner. And since the paper is charged more positively than the drum, the toner gets attracted to the paper and uh, and transfers to the paper. And then finally, uh, heat, heated um, pressure rollers fix the uh, toner to the, into the fibers, that melt the toner and fix it to the fibers of the paper. A laser printer works in the same way, except you don't have to have all the optics to take a picture of a piece of paper. What you have is, is the, um, the image in, um, in, in software. And then you present that image to a laser and the laser scans across the drum, and that light, you scan everywhere where you don't want um, a, an image. So that, that path of the laser beam etches out the area where you don't want toner to be attracted to, and then the rest of the process is the same. Um, also inkjet printers, uh, electrostatics are important here. Um, you have positively, let's see, you have charged, bits of ink, and they pass through deflection plates, one positively charged, one negatively charged, and that causes the, the droplets of ink to be deflected and form the image. 